Where do I even begin with this? Currently it is 11.30 p.m. and I still have not calmed down from the highs that I've had today. Today's been a really, really great day. Today I passed my last section for the CPA exam. So it's been a couple of weeks since I found my score and filmed that intro where I was definitely not articulating or composing my thoughts well. Also, I got a new mic to pick up the sound better because I realized it was very echoey and anyway. The point of this video is to share my experience on, you know, taking the CPA exam, studying for the CPA exam and passing them on the first try. Obviously, everybody has different studying methods. All my friends also pass on the first try and they probably have different study methods, but I just wanted to share mine and my goal was to just aim for a passing. I wasn't trying to shoot for 90 or like 100. I know some people want to do that and you want to add that to your LinkedIn and your resume and whatever. Go for it. But the point of this video is just to share what is the minimal fastest way that you can study to pass. And obviously this is not the best system or whatever. It just worked for me. So take it with a grain of salt. Step one, figure out what the order of the sections you want to take. You might need to plan out what you're doing for the next year, just so you can schedule around the sections. So for me, I took audit, reg, FAR, and then BEC. I knew I was going to take BEC last because everybody said that was the easiest and I knew I was going to be working. So I can't really study for the hardest ones. I wanted to start off with audit because that was like the second to last easiest. So I had like some groove going into it. Like my first one wasn't the easiest, but it also wasn't the hardest. So I could ease myself into it, but also not slack and feel like it was super hard on the second one. So I took audit first. Now here's the most debatable one I think that people say, either reg or FAR. People say FAR is the hardest, but I truly enjoy intermediate accounting. So I really didn't struggle with FAR, but reg, I absolutely did not enjoy tax at all. And I knew I was gonna struggle with that. So I took reg second while I was still a full-time student, like studying in college and all that. Cause I knew FAR was gonna be when I was working full time. So I will definitely not be able to have the brain bandwidth to process reg. So I put FAR third and then BEC. So your first step should be forecasting your next year and kind of figuring out what the order you want to take the exams are in. Step two is the study plan. It is imperative that you look ahead to plan out when you want to take the exam and work backwards to see how many modules there are in the content. I use Becker, uh, people I know all use Becker and it worked really, really well. All I had to do was go through the content and practice the questions and, and boom, you're solid. So I would set my exam date and work backwards. Three weeks prior to the exam date would be dedicated to just doing tons of multiple choice questions, the simulations, and on each weekend right before the exams, I would do the mock exams. So for instance, Saturday, I would do the mock exam. Sunday, I would review it. And then during the weekdays, I would do the multiple choice questions and simulations. Obviously review the mistakes that you had, write down you know, the concepts that you keep getting tripped up on and repeat until you know the exam day. So this is exam day, three weeks before, and you push it back. You, you, you figure out how many modules are in and how many you want to do a day. If you want to go through it really quickly, like for reg, I knew I didn't want to suffer that long. So I actually crammed the content in like three, four weeks, which meant I was spending six hours to eight hours at the start, just doing like, I don't know how many modules. And obviously that burns you out really quickly. So I adjusted for FAR and the other ones where I would just do one module a day when I was like working and stuff. And obviously six to eight hours is not very smart. It's a marathon, so I don't recommend that. But if you're trying to cram it in a short amount of time, go for it. So yeah, that was the plan going backwards. And now going forward, you're gonna have your day one, day two, day three, and you just follow the plan that you set out to study, like how many modules, what are you gonna be doing, etc. Three weeks before the exam, your first mock exam, right? You're gonna do the multiple choice questions and the simulations. And then on the weekend, Saturday, take your mock exam. And then Sunday, I would review it and then repeat the next week, repeat the next week, and then take the exam on the fourth week. Step three, here's how I got through the Becker course content. If you set out saying, well, I'm gonna do one module a day, I don't think that's a great plan because some modules are super freaking long, like an hour and I think the longest one was like an hour and 50 minutes or something. If you include the multiple choice questions and the simulations, then it goes longer. And then some modules are like 15 minutes. So I would say look, look ahead and kind of budget about an hour of lecture 
a day is, is a good way to go, I think. And Becker has lectures, multiple choice questions, and then a simulation within each chapter. And at first I would study each module like step by step, but then I realized that was not the most efficient way. And I kept feeling so defeated when I got to the simulations because a simulation is very comprehensive. If you're just on the first few modules, you're not gonna get the whole picture and you're gonna be missing some things and you can't fill out the simulations and you feel defeated and you wanna quit. Eventually for the last two exams, I adjusted where I would do the lectures and then the multiple choice, skip the simulation, move on to the next one, just going through the lectures and the multiple choice. And by the end of it, when you finish the run through of the content, go back to the first simulation and use those simulations as review to prep you for the mock exam. You won't have that many obstacles. So this method worked really well for me. The first time going through the multiple choice questions, I flagged some of them as like complicated and whatever. So when I was going back the second time to do the simulations, I would also do those incorrect multiple choice questions to help me review. Step four, now that you have the order of the exam that you want to take the plan and how to study the last one is to figure out when to study when i was a full-time college student it really didn't matter when i was studying because i had so much time on my hands but when i started working full-time and was working i felt super burnt out by the end of the night and i just could not focus or study at all so what i would do is wake up early like six in the morning do the lecture and the multiple choice questions and then get into working and that actually had a positive motivation cycle because if I finished the lectures and the multiple choice questions in the morning, I had a phenomenal day because I knew I was gonna be fully focused at work and then after work, I could do whatever the heck I wanted. Granted, I do have to sleep at 10 to get that eight hours of sleep that I need. So if nighttime study works for you, go for it. If morning works for you, do that. Just basically figure out what's the best time for you to study every day and stay consistent because that could see the best results. Step five is the mock exams. I think Becker recently switched from three mock exams to two mock exams with three mini exams. It works the same way. And what I would do is three weeks prior to the exam, the real exam, I would do the three mini exams, review them on Sunday. And on the second weekend, I would do the first full mock exam review it and then the week before the exam i would do the second full mock exam and then review it the last week the last few days leading up to the exam i would just take a chill read through the notes of the things that i have had issues with and then you're good to go don't cram too much before the exam because it's just going to stress you out i think just trust in the studies that you've done um becker does a really really good job so i think if you just follow a plan like this it, it, it can't go wrong if you're if you're fully engaged in lectures Doing, doing the work of the multiple choice questions and reviewing, going back to do the simulations. Do not skip the simulations. I know I'm guilty of this as well. Like the simulations are so long and so like tedious and whatever. So you want to skip them, but, but don't because they're super important. Okay, so to summarize with these props, step one is to plan out what order you want to take the exams. Step two is to look through the table of contents and the online Becker thing where it actually shows you how long the lectures are, like 15 minutes and then multiple choice. The multiple choice projection minutes are not correct at all. Usually when they estimate 70 minutes, I'm like, oh my God, this is so long, but I actually just finished it in 20 minutes. So that's that's not, just, just look at this, right? And just sometimes budget one, two, depending on the Becker hours online, just, just go for that, that's the study plan. Step three is to go through the lecture multiple choice and then move on to the next module, move on to the next module. And step four is to figure out when is best for you to study and stay consistent. Five mock exams. And just to show you a little bit how hectic my notes actually are, these are the notes of my BEC things, concepts that I was confused about or you know needed some extra reminders. So you can see like I wrote it down the first time when I finally remember the concept, I would do a tick mark. If I still don't remember, I'd do like a circle or something just as a reminder that, oh, this I'm having still having trouble with. And the last thing is to highlight right before the exam. I cannot believe I almost forgot final review. This is Becker's final review and it's pretty optional. Some people don't think it helps, but I, I think it do. What? But I think it does because it's like a high level over the things that you pretty much must know. This is probably the book that I will look at the week before the exam. Oh, and last thing, remember to budget in buffer days because there are gonna be days where something unexpected happens or you just can't study. So make sure to add in like a couple of buffer days between, you know, like maybe like one buffer day, catch up day between each section transition, you know? So hopefully that helped. I know I kind of rambled a little bit. Whether you're just starting out on your CPA journey or right in the middle of it or almost done, congratulations, you're almost there. Good luck on your CPA journey. And if it helps, I've dropped a link in the description of my BEC study plan. Um, and if you found this video helpful or like this video, please give it a like. 
Subscribe if you want. I post so many random things that I don't even know what I'm going to post next. Um, so yeah, good luck on your journey. Okay, bye.